Good morning. I was able to get my hands on a Oculus Rift, as you can see. Uh, so today we're going to do things a little bit differently. Uh, I wanted to take a look through probably one of the more popular pieces of software and probably uh, is being touted as the must-get software for the uh, Oculus and for VR in general, uh, the application called Virtual Desktop. And what Virtual Desktop does, on the surface it seems like, oh, all it does is just basically wraps your desktop around you so you can take a look around or whatever. Well, not quite. So we're going to have a little picture in picture here so you guys can see exactly what I'm seeing. Obviously, the headset's on my, on my head, so you can't really see exactly uh, uh, what I see here. But um, let's go ahead and correct this. We'll get in here and we're going to take a look around. So this is, uh, well, hold on, reset orientation. Reset orientation. There it goes. All right. So this is the environment that I've chosen here. Uh, I can actually change this if I want to. Uh, what do I say? Uh, change background to milk drop. And what it'll do is actually it'll load up uh, a, if you're familiar with milk drop from the old Winamp visualization uh, days, uh, well, you pretty much know what to expect, I think, which is a trippy, trippy, trippy environment. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, change environment to sunrise. <clears throat> oh, change background to sunrise. There we go. All right, so let's take a look at the app itself uh, here in this uh, lovely, lovely uh, sunrise environment here. Uh, so we have a couple options here. We have curved, so you can have a flat monitor if you want. I mean, yeah, again, at its core, it's allowing you to uh, navigate your desktop and do things in a VR environment, which does seem, it does seem silly. Uh, but the difference is that you're able to get a, uh, a larger screen, so to speak. The fidelity is not going to be quite as great because the pixel pitch is not going to be quite as dense as... Uh, as a monitor itself, uh, but depending on what you're doing, it could come in kind of handy, right? It's also just kind of neat. So let's go ahead and <clears throat> see. Uh, we're not going to worry about floating. Floating just basically means I could, if I click on that and I look over here, I can say, actually, let's do it this way. Uh, reset orientation. Reset orientation. There we go. I guess it moves the thing over there. Reset orientation. Actually, I don't think that's exactly how it's supposed to work, but one thing it doesn't do, the thing that I actually thought that it was going to do for me is allow me to move the windows uh, to somewhere out of the bounds, and it doesn't. And this is probably the biggest drawback of this, the absolute biggest drawback. If you have a 4K monitor, like three or four 4K monitors, you're gold. You're going to have a huge space to work with, which is really dumb because we're in an environment that is supposed to be virtual. I should be able to move monitors anywhere I want in this space. Uh, I can't <laughs> because I'm limited to, uh, because of the way that it draws the desktop in this space, it uses the active ports output on your video card. So you have to have, like right now I have two monitors, right? Let me go and actually pull it up. So first we go curved, now we have a curved environment here, and then we go multi-monitor. Now it's it's the two monitors that I actually have, and then you see the preview monitor up here that it's being used for my, uh, to capture this particular video. So taking a look around, you see that I'm limited by the the monitor that, uh, the monitors, plural, that I have uh, currently available. So it seems like, all right, seems kind of dumb. And it, it, I mean, honestly, it's kind of silly that I can't just take monitors and move them all the way over to like behind me or something and have uh, different spaces set up for different things. That's kind of what a virtual environment should be for, right? Like a little holodeck kind of, right? Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, it is, however, handy if you do have a bunch of monitors. I used to have a four monitor setup, in which case this would have been great. I could have set it up so that everything would span and I would have a huge space to work with. Uh, granted, this should be enough, right? This uh, top monitor is 3440 by uh, 1440, I believe, uh, height to width. And then uh, the bottom one is 1920 by 1080. So it should be plenty of space to work with. Now, take a look at the settings down here. Uh, let's go ahead and we can zoom back a little bit. Uh, or change the, um, uh, the screen size by going like this. I know we can bring it wrap around. You can make it really, really close. <laughs> God, 360 degree screen. So this is what, this is actually what, when you, if you saw the video on, uh, uh, on like Reddit or on Facebook or wherever, this is actually where, uh, what they were displaying where they were saying, yeah, you have a 360 degree, you know, viewable space. It's, it's a bit misleading. <laughs> Again, there's a bit of a novelty to this software, and a little bit of there's a little bit, of, and there's also a little bit of truth and utility. Uh, but you know, the wraparound being able to look all the way there it is. There's my start window and my 
uh, my time beat up right there. Uh, all the way back around, and here we go. So, uh, once again, I'm searching now for the mouse. So let's go ahead and uh, take, and we'll bring this down a little bit. F2 should bring it down, yeah, there we go. So make this thing a bit more reasonable. There we go. And screen distance. This makes a huge difference, actually. So this is, even though it looks like it didn't move at all, it totally, it completely did. Uh, so now, when I move back and forth, there's basically no difference. You can see in the picture in picture here, I'm moving back and forth, and there's basically no difference here. Uh, but if I move the screen closer, right, we're, we're right about where does it stop? Okay, yeah, so right about here, it kind of stops, starts really making a difference. Now if I move around, you can see there is an actual kind of a space here. And I can look around to take closer looks at things. You can see my any for breakfast and space engineers things uh, right over here on my, uh, on my thumbnails there. Uh, if I can get really close like this, uh, then it becomes very rounded. Uh, and it actually feels kind of like a spherical like space screen wrapped around my head. Uh, now I can actually get really, really close to things and take a really close look. I'm going to bump into this microphone. I know it's... Uh, and then I can take a look at things. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and I can take a look and see uh, very up close. So where would this be handy? Well, watching videos, first of all, is pretty cool, which we'll get to in just a moment. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, obviously, uh, if you want to experience things in a, just a larger environment. Uh, so for me, I decided to load up Lightroom. And so here's, an old, here's a photo shoot that I did. It was very difficult finding one where I didn't have nudity. Uh, but they, so here's my thumbs. Uh, and I could just go through and you could take a look at it, right? Now, I'd imagine in a space where I was standing up, it'd be a little bit easier to just be able to, uh, uh, to be able to, to, to kind of move around in this, you know, environment here, move back and forth and kind of take around. Cause I can, if I want to, <laughs> I can, I can take a look and be like, oh yeah, the sun's out. Let me see here. All right, cool. Yeah. Because this space, this thing exists in a virtual space. Uh, now, here we go. Let's go ahead and click on this and we'll go full screen. Uh, again, I'm limited by the monitor uh, because it's not going to go down here. Uh, I'm limited by what it's giving me here. Um, but if I were doing some fine tuning somewhere, like on this particular photo or something, uh, I could get a little bit closer and take a look around and do some changes. So this is what it's like navigating this kind of environment in, uh, in VR, like to be able to take a, a closer look at things. I mean, this is, to me, this is a huge screen. Like to me, this is massive. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm completely uh, wrapped, wrapped in this giant environment. Uh, let me actually go ahead and we'll go ahead and move it back a little bit. There you go. Now it feels a bit more like, there you go. Now it feels a bit more like a big screen. You know, I could take a, I could sit back, I could take a look around. Uh, and then using the uh, the hotkeys, I could zoom in and off. I needed to get closer uh, and take a look at, you know, whoa, <laughs> wow, what the hell is going on? <laughs> take a look at my thumbnails almost in full full resolution there. All right, it's going back off a little bit. Now, it does have voice commands. You heard me say uh, uh, reset uh, orientation a couple times. <laughs> I wanted to space that out so it doesn't do it. Um, I could also go to uh, show bindings. Show bindings. Show games. Play. Well, I have to think. Play Overwatch. Launching Overwatch. This should be really interesting. I have no idea what it's going to do here. Oh, nice. It's going to put it down there. Oh, pfft. don't want me to do all that. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> but what I can do actually is I'm going to exit this. So here we are in World of Warcraft. Uh, as you can see, I already changed the background and everything, so that way we can, uh, I don't know, be more immersed, I guess? <laughs> kind of an Outland style vibe, right? Um, but it's, it's, it's definitely a, um, uh, a big gigantic screen for me. I mean, for me, this is a huge, super massive screen. Uh, let me actually go ahead and make some changes here. No, 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 sound of background, there we go. And then what I'm gonna do is, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this and we're going to move this thing a little bit closer. <laughs> this is the same effect. Reset orientation. There we go. This is, this, this is basically the same effect as I was showing with Lightroom, is being able to wrap things around. Now, this is, this is cheating VR. This isn't 
you know, I'm not actually in this environment looking around, right? Uh, I mean, even if I go first person, it's not, it's not the same. I'm not actually looking around with my headset. I'm just looking around in a giant screen that's wrapped around my face, and that's pretty much it. So, again, neat. <laughs> uh, if you want a big screen, I can imagine if you wanted to play games on a, in, in a much larger environment or watch movies uh, in a much larger environment than what you normally can, you could do it with this. You totally can. And it looks, it looks perfectly fine. It's really strange. Like, looking around at everything, you're limited by, of course, the quality of the headset, but it actually looks pretty good. Let me actually uh, go and get back out here and see if we make some more changes. Go ahead and move it a little farther away. There we go. Now, now it feels like a big screen theater here. And I'll actually go and do this. Yeah, there we go. I mean, obviously you're not going to be playing like this. You know, imagine running around trying to get stuff done and trying to look up here. It's like, let, 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 me, let me check the mini map. Let me, let me, let me check my health. Let me uh, check. You're going to need, you're gonna need to make some changes if you want to play games this way. But, I mean, it works. Imagine playing Overwatch like this. You probably get the same effect, like being able to... Uh, have this wraparound environment is definitely neat. But it's not the selling point of the game. The selling point of the game, and by the way, uh, as long as I have this thing for this week, I'm going to see if I can't find a way to use uh, use the Vive with World of Warcraft uh, in, 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 a, in, a, uh, uh, in an environment that's meaningful, <laughs> that's useful. Because right now, this is cool, but it's not very useful. Maybe playing arcade style games or platformers or whatever, sitting here on the big screen, yeah, that'd be great. Because again, to me, this is like IMAX level screens. It's freaking nuts. So let's go ahead and actually back off here. Uh, nice seeing you again, by the way. All right, now we get to the, uh, probably one of the main reasons why you'd pay $14.99 for this, for this particular thing. Not just, I mean, navigating the desktop and everything is great, but being able to play videos, uh, and there's tons of different types of videos, uh, is probably the best part about this app. It is, it, I mean, right now, maybe a month from now, two months from now, VLC is going to get their shit together and we're going to have a really nice, very simple to use uh, HMD supporting, uh, headset supporting um, uh, you know, player that will play just about everything. But right now, this thing's built-in player is pretty goddamn good. You have different options here because there's different types of VR, right? Standard is basically, if I load a 360 video with standard, uh, it means it's not stereo. Uh, I'm just basically able to look around 360 degrees. I can set to 360 or 180. Porn is typically in 180. We'll see a little bit of that in a second. Very, very little of that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, over under, which is basically the same as side by side, but of course, on top or below. Uh, now, you can just go find a video on YouTube and paste it right there, and that's going to do it, right? It's going to download it, and it'll save it to your to your uh, to a folder, uh, as you can see here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take a look at uh, Space Girl here. I'll link to this video below if you want to check it out, but this is a standard video. There is there is a little bit of depth, of course. Hold on, rookie. It seems Hold like it, down. but I'm able to I'm able to actually take a look around. Oh hey! <laughs> I didn't know that. Wait, let's go back. But here, yeah, here we go. Now I'm able to uh, watch and be inside of this Don't environment. Worry. I can repair the ship. With this. Just Nice young lady here. Again, the video will be uh, down below. Explosion. And then, of course. Oh, frack. Frack, yep. <laughs> Let's go ahead now and load up another one. Uh, Pac-Man in 360. This link again will also be in the bottom here. We're gonna fast forward a little bit. As you can see, I'm able to take a look around. It's on, it's auto runner basically. It's just kind of running through because it's a video. But I'm still able to look around in 360 to see what's happening behind. It's a bit a bit strange a little bit because, uh, because I, I'm moving and so is the camera, but there's so many linear straight ways here, this totally works. A game like this would actually totally work too. It's kind of like, you know, you're sitting inside of a mine car or something like that, and you're trying to take out baddies or something. Totally works. And then of course, probably the best, <laughs> best use of this, uh, not just regular videos. These are videos I just download off YouTube. I click and paste the URL <clears throat> after I found the video on YouTube. Uh, but also being able to uh, watch, of course, porn. Porn is probably the most interesting thing about this because porn, uh, it doesn't use, like right now this is, uh, this is 360, but it's flat, right? You feel like there's depth, but there's not. Like as I move around, there's no depth. There's no, uh, it doesn't feel like things are like really necessarily closer or farther away outside of just the fact that they're larger and perspective, uh, force perspective kind of makes you feel like they are. Uh, but 
in an, uh, in, in, with porn, porn actually takes it to the next level where they actually have, uh, and some of these videos are of course are available on, uh, on, um, on YouTube as well, uh, but in porn, they actually have stereo, you know, stereo 3D sound, or sorry, uh, 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 video. Uh, so actually we're gonna play a very brief uh, piece of this so you guys can see it. So in this environment here, you can see, this is really strange, okay? Cause like, it looks like an ass is on my face. It looks, like, hey, look at it outside. Uh, it looks like I am looking, like I'm laying down, I'm looking straight up at this. I can look around, there's actual depth here. There's black borders, as you can see here on the left and right. Uh, I'm very worried about looking over to my right here. Uh, but you're actually able to just see exactly where the, the video cuts off with the black bars. This is a 180 degree video, right? <laughs> We're just gonna blur out some of this stuff because I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, but taking a look around, you can see there is, I mean, it's a freaking awesome environment and there's a lot of depth. You're not able to really see it, of course, but I am. There is a lot of depth here. This is maybe a bit too much. So this is pretty much how porn is working it out. And I can show you this first couple seconds here because after this, it gets pretty, uh, it gets pretty hairy. <laughs> this is, to me, in my perspective, there is a lot of depth here. It's the, the fidelity is not amazing, but there's a lot of depth. And this is also really interesting. Good morning. <laughs> They're just talking into a microphone right here. But Are you ready for your that's... vitamin D, your morning boost? There you go, all right. So that's Virtual Desktop in a nutshell. It is pretty much the, uh, the coolest app you could get right now on VR, besides like games and such. Uh, being able to play back videos in yeah, a widescreen theater view is kind of awesome. Being able to play back, uh, obviously there's a lot of video content out there that I can't show you that uh, is pretty immersive, uh, if you will. Uh, there's a lot of gaming stuff that you could do in this environment that is also very cool. Again, being able to have that ultra widescreen experience uh, like you're at IMAX or at a movie theater or something like that is very, very, very uh, awesome. Uh, and also, of course, all the flexibility with it. Being able to do all kinds of stuff, move it around, back and forth, uh, wrap it around, uh, being able to work in an environment that allow you to get up, and up close and personal. For me, as a photographer, being able to get really close to a picture is also kind of, it's kind of neat. I mean, granted, I can do the same thing looking at my monitor here, uh, but I'd imagine in the future, and this actually is probably one of its drawbacks as well, um, I'll be able to actually expand that environment. So maybe if I take a photo, I could actually view it almost in full size as if I was there. And then I can, I kind of not necessarily walk around the environment, but walk around it like I'm looking at a painting uh, to be able to critique it and get another uh, perspective on that. Uh, I'd imagine for an artist, you'd be doing the same thing. Somebody that sketches or draws, you'd be able to take another perspective at it, stop, blow it up to life size, and kind of take a look at it on a 2D plane, look around and see what it looks like, and then make adjustments from there. Uh, the biggest drawback, again, is the fact that I cannot expand beyond the number of windows I already have, or another a number of monitors I already have on my uh, computer, which sucks, but at least it's something that, uh, that could potentially uh, be updated later on. And when that does happen, that's gonna make this the ultimate go-to. It already has a ton of great settings. Uh, it already works. It has some Steam VR style functions in there. Uh, it's just a bit more, actually, it's a bit more uh, flexible than Steam VR. Uh, you can have the custom backgrounds and all that stuff if you want to, so you can create your environment. Uh, and then of course, being able to play videos and view photos uh, in a 3D space uh, or a VR space is very, very, very cool. Uh, but I would, if you don't, obviously if you don't have a, you don't have a VR headset, then don't bother. Uh, but if you have a VR headset, definitely something to look at, probably a must have for now. Uh, if they ever do allow you to expand the screen so that you can have as many screens as you want, move things around in a 3D environment, minority report style, then this is gonna be the absolute must have software of uh, the, the, the upcoming VR era, if you will. So that's it guys, this is Virtual Desktop, available right now on Steam for $14.99. My name is Mike BAK Phony. Thank you for mu so much for supporting me on Patreon. These videos won't be possible without you guys. Patreon.com slash AKA Mike B. Uh, and if you guys have any comments or anything you want me to check out, you know, let me know, obviously below, please let me know. Uh, or hit me up on Twitter, AKA Mike B, because uh, I need to know, you guys. I only have this thing for like seven days, and then after that, it's back to, you know, you know, Regular stuff, regular flat screen stuff. But uh, yeah, this thing is pushing my face. Ah, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.